Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to uh, extend our look at file sharing and talk about setting up file sharing permissions. Uh, one of the questions I get quite often is how to work with permissions and how to set up folders in particular ways. And so what I wanted to do is go in depth on that just to give you an idea of how it works. Uh, so here we are in our file sharing area. And let me just go in and edit our folder again. And let me just talk about permissions for a minute. So down here is where you see our basic permissions. You can see I've got myself. There's also a, a staff group right here. And you can see that's a group. And then I've got this global thing for everybody else. And then I've got permissions over here. Now what these are is built into uh, server is uh, POSIX permissions, or Portable Operating System Interface for Unix. That's what that stands for. And these are your basic permissions. Now, these are acts, they, there's a difference between access permissions, which are the actions over here, and privileges permissions, which are the people over here and what they can do. You know, who can do what. So this is who can do what, and this is what they can do. And that's how it's simply set up. So, for example, on the users over here, you'll usually have a, on a typical setup, you'll have a root uh, who's an admin, and you can see here it says owner, so I'm the admin right here. You'll have a wheel, it'll say wheel here uh, instead of staff, and that's your groups. And then you'll have others, which is other people. And typically it'll say that. You'll either get your names in here because we're using the server app, or it'll say admin, it'll say root, wheel, and others. And then over here are my permissions. And the permissions I have available is I have read and write, where I can actually read what's in the folder and write to it. I've got read only, where I can read the contents, but I can't write to it. I've got write only, where I can't see what's in there, but I can drop a file in, kind of like a Dropbox. And then no access, and that's where this particular folder just wouldn't show up for me at all if I tried to mount to it. It would just disappear and be inaccessible by me. So I can set those basic permissions in here, and I can add users. For instance, I created a test user, so let's just add the test user in there. And you can see there's the user, and so I can add this test user, and then I can set specific permissions for that user just by putting the user in here. And you can see that the no access gets removed because the assumption is I added the person, therefore I want some level of access to this particular folder. And then I can save it, and you can see I've got SMB and AFP set up. So let's go ahead and just add that person there. And that's going to add them to this particular folder, and now they've got access to it. And if I come back into edit, you can see there's my test person. I can always come in and change permissions if I want to. So it's going to cancel that. Now, in working with uh, file sharing permissions, however, uh, there's not only uh, POSIX permissions, which are those basic ones for Unix, but there's also access control lists, or ACLs, that are added as well. And ACLs allow you to fine tune and uh, your permissions, and they take precedence over the POSIX ones. Now they they kind of need to line up and everything, but they will take permission, and you can do more fine tuned work with that. So let me show you what that looks like. If I just uh, come over here to server, and if we go to the storage tab here on server, and I'm going to go to this particular share that we just used earlier, and inside this share I've got a project X and a project Y folder set up. Now let me show you what these access control lists look like. So if I just come in here, highlight a folder, and if I click the cogwheel here, you notice I can set up a new folder in here. I can edit permissions or I can propagate permissions. Uh, obviously editing permissions allows me to edit the permissions on the folder. Propagating permissions allows me to propagate whatever permissions I have on this folder down to the subfolders. In case I've got a mess down here, I can change what I want up here. And if I want it the same all the way through the tree, I just set propagate permissions and it'll propagate it all the way down. So let's go ahead and do edit permissions. And this is what the edit permissions window looks like. And as you can see, I've got my setup here just like I had it before. Uh, but you'll notice I've got these little triangles here for new users that I added. Now remember, these are my basic uh, POSIX permissions. Okay, That's why I don't have any extra little arrows there. When I have that little arrow, that means I have ACLs that I can use uh, to fine tune my editing. You can see I can do in here the same kinds of things, read and write, read only, read write only. Uh, but if I come in here and just hit this little arrow, these are all my access control lists for the user that I put in. And so you can see that I've got uh, all kinds of options here. I've got, if I just click on this, you'll notice that I've got read and write, read, write, and then I've also got full control. And full control allows me to have full control of everything. It gives me administrative privileges and all these boxes get checked right in here. 
Um, now you'll notice here, wherever you see a check mark, that means anything underneath the tree, everything is uh, accessed, is uh, checked. As you can see here, everything's checked. If I've got the little white dash there, that means that there's maybe one or more that aren't checked. And if I've got this white at the top here, that means none of these functions are available. So I just wanted to show you that that's there. So let's take a look at some of these things in the dropdown. Now I can give this user uh, administration privileges, and I can choose whether they have change over permissions or change to owner. And so I can set that right there to where they can become the owner of this folder and have full access, or they have the option or ability to change permissions on the folder if they want to. So you can see I can fine tune the administrative features there. Uh, if I just drop this down under read, I can choose how they can read, whether they can read the attributes of a, of a particular folder or file, they can read extended attributes, uh, they can list the folder contents to read the data, uh, they can traverse the folder, which means they can go through the folder uh, and see what's inside of it, or they can read uh, the permissions of the folder, and I can c keep people from doing that. So if I didn't want my user to read the permissions on the folder at all to see who else had access to it, I could just uncheck this box and that would disappear and they wouldn't have access to it. Uh, under write, you can see that I have write attributes here. And so they can look at the right attributes. They can write extended attributes if they want to. They can create files inside this particular share. They can create a folder if they want to inside the share. They can uh, either delete things or delete subfolders and files. And so if I didn't want a user to do any deleting, I would just select this and undo that. And you can see it, I have to click OK for that to take place. And then that would change how they do it. I'm just going to leave that alone as we had it before. And then I've got inheritance. And so this is how uh, the, it allow, allows the uh, subfolders to inherit everything that's there. So I can apply it to just this folder. I can apply it to the child folders, the, apply to child files, apply to all descendants. So if I only wanted to apply it just to this folder and not everything else, then I would uncheck these other boxes. And it would only apply to this particular folder, not the ones I had below. So as you can see, there's a lot of options here of different things that I can do to manage my, uh, my various uh, permissions. Now, uh, a couple of uh, just hints and tips on how to do this. Um, you probably want to, uh, you only want to use this when it's necessary just because this can get really complicated. And if you make a mistake, you could lock yourself out of a folder and now you no longer have access. You want to make sure that you always have admin access. You know, for instance, the owner here is always you and you've always got that read and write so you can get in there or otherwise you're going to have some problems. Um, the other thing is, is you want to, uh, you know, make, the uh, best way to manage this is to do it by groups. So if you created more groups, kind of like this staff group, and managed it that way. So if you've got different departments, maybe you set up a department for accounting and one for marketing and that sort of thing. Uh, it makes it a little easier to then apply all the way down your tree. And if you have problems, then you just have a group to correct, not all your different users. So that's, that's kind of another way to do it. Um, you also want to... Um, Look at it this way, you protect your folders and things with uh, POSIX and then use your ACLs to give specific permissions underneath. Uh, that's another, uh, just another tip on how to do that to make it a little easier. Um, and then you want to avoid as many uh, nuns as possible when you're setting this up so that you don't get locked out of those folders. Okay, to give you an idea of how permissions work, let me just cancel this for a minute. And you can see I've got my server tests, and I've, I've created three project files in here. And let's just say I want to have my test uh, person only have access to this project Y, and there are some documents in there. I don't want them to access X, and I don't want them to access Z. I just want them to access project Y. Well, first of all, what I've got to do is let him into this folder in order for him to see the folders that are in here. Now, I don't want him to add anything in here. So what I'm going to do is come in here. I'm going to edit my permissions. And I'm going to change him from read and write to just read. I only want him to read. And if you look down here, you can see it's set him up to read. And it shows everything that he can do in here. He can read the attributes and what's in there and all of that. And I've got the inheritance. Now, I can set this inheritance to apply to this folder, to the child folders, uh, to all the other ones and their descendants. I'm going to go ahead and just, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck that. I only want it to apply to this folder. So I don't want it in the child folders or the descendants or anything like that. I'm just going to leave that alone. And I'm going to say apply, uh, OK to apply that. So I'm going to say OK. Let me just close this to simplify it. All right, so now we've set that up. Now, if I come down here into these folders, for instance, if I just uh, edit permissions, you'll notice that uh, he's not shown anywhere in here, which is good. That's what I want. I don't want him in here. And the other thing I need to do, let me just make sure I show you that here, is I'm also going to set the staff 
I can set the staff to read only and others to, I can set it to none if I want to or read only um, if I want them to see that. Um, I'll probably just leave those alone. But down at this level here, I'm going to make sure that these show none. So he's not listed here and these show none. I'm going to come in here to pro uh, Project Y and edit these permissions. And I've got him right there as read and write because uh, I had set that up earlier to have that show up. So that's, that's what I want. I want him to read and write there. And here I'm just going to say none to both of these so that it's set up that way. We're going to say OK. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Edit permissions and just make sure oh, he just showed up there. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that. I had done that earlier. And I've got these set up as none the way I want it. So now let's see what that would look like when someone logs in. So I've got a screen share over here, and I'm just going to come inside, and I'm going to say go connect to server. And we're going to use our AFP prompt to connect to the server here. I'm going to say connect, and it's going to ask me for my login credentials. So let me put those in there. And we're going to connect, and there's my server test folder. So I'm going to say OK and connect to it. And here's what you get. You can see here's the server test folder. I'm connected to that share. And then inside there are these folders. Notice I've got Project X, which it won't let me in. It's got the little no permission sign here, and Z, which it won't let me in. But I can get inside Y and look at the file that's inside of there. But I can't get into these other two projects because I set it up that way so that they can't get in there. OK, one more quick thing I wanted to show you is if you didn't want to go through all of those very specific permissions, uh, with file sharing, you could set up your own, let's say, Dropbox here, where you just have people put things into a folder, but they can't see what's in it or, or view it, but they can just write to it. So they can just drop files in there if you wanted to have that set up. Let me just show you how to do that real quick, because it's just a different way of doing it. I come in here to File Sharing and hit the plus, and I've got this uh, file here called File Files. I'm going to go ahead and choose that and add that as a file share. So here it is as a file share. Now instead of having to go back over here to the storage tab, I could just write in here using the POSIX uh, permissions, set this up to be the staff primarily to be write only. Uh, so that's anybody now who's in your staff group can be, see, have write only. And we're going to set everyone else to no access. You could set everyone else to write only as well. And that way the only person who can see inside that would be the actual administrator in this case. So let me show you how that looks. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK and leave that alone. And now let's go over to my screen share. And what I'm going to do is just throw this file in there. So we're going to say go. We're going to connect to server again. Uh, same kind of thing. And I'm going to put in my information. And once I've done that, I'm going to say connect. And so there's the file files folder that shows up. I'm going to say OK. And again, it warns me right away. I don't have permission to see the contents that are in there. It says here it is. We've mounted it, but you can't see inside. And notice I, I don't get a blank side here that it shows an empty folder or anything. I just get the share itself. I can then take this file and just drop it. Notice I get the plus right there. If I just drop it, I get this warning that says I can put items in here, but I can't see them. You sure you want to do this? And I'll say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so now that file has been copied there. So that if I just go ahead and close this down, and I come back in here, and let's go back up here to my file files, and there's the document that I dropped in right there. So I can see it because I've got administrator privileges here on the server, but no one else would be able to see that and access it. So that gives you an idea of a couple of different ways that you can use uh, permissions uh, with your files and file sharing. Just wanted to go over that because I get a number of questions on it. Uh, one of the things you can't do is in nested folders like this when we do this nesting, um, you can't have access to only these subfolders when you're nesting. You have to just, uh, in other words, put your department in here with the different files and then by users it will be, or groups, they'll have the little red uh, dash that will show what they don't have permission to and whatever doesn't have it looks like this is open uh, for them to access so anyways i hope that helps you get your own permission set up so that's all i have for this week i'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your mac if you're interested in help in setting up your own server feel free to contact me at todd at todd